Benita Bay was created in the vision of its founder, David Sharkarian, who believed nature and wildlife could live in harmony in a planned residential community. He was right. The founder's vision was recognized all over the world when we were awarded the coveted Audubon International Cooperative Sanctuary Certification in 2004. The beauty and tranquility of our sanctuary of 2,400 acres, 80 some odd lakes, wetlands, parks, recreational facilities, 3,400 plus homes, and the countless species of birds, fish, animals, and all that nature gives us is being seriously tested by an invasive species of frog that has made its way north into Florida from the subtropics. Hello, my name is Rod McKenzie. I'm a 30-year resident of Bonita Bay, and I've been on the board since its turnover to residents in about 2011, and currently am chairman of the Lakes and Wetlands Committee. A year or two ago, the board started getting a number of phone calls from residents saying they had bunches of tiny frogs in around their home. We looked into that as a Lakes and Wetlands Committee, and after doing some research, discovered that in fact, these were cane toads, and they're very poisonous to pets, children, and other birds and animals. We contacted Dan Quinn, who is one of the two invasive species specialists in the state of Florida. We then talked to the board more directly and said, we need to do something about this. They authorized significant funding to hire Southern Trappers on a full-time basis. They also asked their maintenance employees to come in on weekends and pay them overtime to harvest the eggs and the tadpoles. We are working jointly with the club to solve this issue. Both of us are communicating on a very regular basis. We have organized a group of lake walkers to walk each of the lakes, spot eggs and tadpoles. We then organized a group of volunteers scour the golf courses periodically with the approval of the golf course superintendent to harvest these adult cane toads. If you see cane toads, you can report them to an area called bbcahome.com. Also put out a monthly report for all residents to see how many cane toads were harvested in their particular neighborhoods. This problem is larger than our staff can handle. We need residents to volunteer to help because this has to be an ongoing project over the next several years. We appreciate everything everybody is doing. We want you to do it safely. Therefore, we want you to watch this video and learn how to properly harvest the cane toads. The bottom line is we need all the residents to stay alert, be vigilant, and help us over the next several years get this system under some kind of containment so our community continue to be as beautiful as it has been in the past. My name is Dan Quinn, and I'm a non-native fish and wildlife biologist with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Our agency's mission is to conserve fish and wildlife resources for their long-term well-being and for the benefit of people. Cane toads are considered to be a non-native invasive wildlife species. They were brought here in the 20s and 30s, be used as a biocontrol by the sugar industry, and were released in some points around Lake Okeechobee. There's evidence to suggest that those populations never established and were eventually eradicated just naturally. Poison secreted by the cane toads is really a particular threat to, to both native wildlife and to domestic animals. We received reports uh, throughout the state, but especially in Southwest Florida, when talking to members of the public and some of our partnering agencies, uh, we realized that cane toads were a very big concern, especially for members of the public. For a large community like Bonita Bay, with all of its landmass and all of its different water bodies, it's really going to take a large community effort to make an appreciable impact. It's very important that um, they're not removed in just one area, but across the landscape. There's no magic bullet for removing large numbers of cane toads all at once. It's going to take a large effort by quite a few people to make an appreciable impact. Working within your community, talking to members of other communities about removing as many of these animals as possible is going to make the largest impact. It may take months or maybe even years, but the more you work at it, the less you're going to see of these cane toads. Going out there and removing these things is the most effective strategy right now. 
So the cane toad absolutely is a threat to pets, especially smaller pets. The smaller the animal, the higher the risk. Um, also, the more venom ingested, the higher the risk. So when the toad is stressed, it will release the venom from the parotid glands, which are up at the base of the, the skull or the base of the head. When that occurs, if they then bite the toad, mouth the toad, lick the toad, and they get that venom in their mouth, depending on how much they get, um, it will cause adverse effects, sometimes even leading to death. Keep your dog on a short leash. Make sure that you only travel in well-lit areas. They tend to come out in the evenings. Even though Florida is hot and we like to walk in the evenings, that's when the toads are going to be out. The non-retractable leashes are by far better than the retractable leashes because if they take off running on a retractable leash, you have no idea 10, 15 feet away from you what they're able to get into and ingest. I see uh, cane toad toxicity quite frequently especially in dogs that have a high prey drive. So we tend to see it in Jack Russells, Dachshunds, but any dog that has a high prey drive that is gonna chase and attack these toads is very common. First sign that you usually see with bufa toad toxicity is the dog is gonna hypersalivate. They're gonna paw at their mouth and they're gonna drool a lot. After that, they can vomit. And after that, we'll see them start to show other signs of toxicity. That being said, if they ingest a large amount of toxin and it's a small pet, they can die within 15 minutes. Getting your pet to a veterinarian immediately is of utmost importance. I'm Paul Gavin. I'm a resident and I am a member of both the Community Association and the Club's Lakes and Wetlands Committee. I coordinate the removal of cane toads from the golf courses. We remove cane toads at night on the beautiful Bonita Bay golf courses. The recommended attire for hunting is a long sleeve shirt, long pants, comfortable sneakers or hiking shoes, and a hat. If you prefer to wear a short sleeve shirt and or shorts, be sure to use insect repellent. And as a precaution, we wear surgical gloves. Cane toads have toxin in a gland on each side. They do not spray or squirt the toxin. It is secreted. In the unlikely event you get some of the cane toad toxin on your gloves, you simply change your gloves. If you happen to get it on your skin, you simply wash it with soap and water. The essential tools we use are a headlamp, which provides plenty of light, and leaves us hands free, a net, and a container that's lined in which we place the captured cane toads. We work in groups of three or four. We're typically assigned to cover three holes on the golf course, and we stay on the golf course. For your own safety, we do not go into the vegetation searching for cane toads. Capturing a cane toad is not difficult. You place the net in front of the cane toad. It's as simple as that. At the end of the hunt, which takes normally about an hour, if your team has more than one container, then the containers will be consolidated all into one. Following morning, we come over to the Community Association maintenance yard, to the cane toad only freezer, take the plastic bags that contain the cane toads, deposit the bags into the freezer, and in a couple of days, the Community Association maintenance staff will take the bags and they will dispose of them. The inaccessible wetlands and natural areas of Bonita Bay cover a substantial portion of our acreage. So it's doubtful we'll ever totally eliminate the cane toad. But we can keep them in check. It will take quite a few volunteers. We need your help. The Macias Wildlife Society was formed in April 2018. I'm the president of the organization. Ann Macias was our inspiration. She'd started an educational outreach program with FGCU to share the information about the birds and wildlife of Bonita Bay. Ann Macias passed away and we formed the nonprofit to carry on her work. 
and we decided to get involved in this cane toad effort because cane toads are a threat to our native wildlife. They are poisonous. They're not only poisonous to domestic animals, they're poisonous to native birds and animals. They eat other frogs and native tadpole, and they compete for food with those. In February of this year, in 2020, I was invited to join the Lakes and Wetlands Committee. As part of that, I was doing lake surveys, and we realized we had a lot of tadpoles. We started doing some little mini training sessions with folks in neighborhoods on how to remove tadpoles. And I got an urgent call one Monday from a friend who said, we've got a serious tadpole problem in the lake across the street from my house, and that'd be this lake, Lake Number 44. I called a few friends. We recruited a group, and we removed 25 gallons of tadpoles from this lake on the first day, five five-gallon buckets of tadpoles. The second day, we removed about 15 to 20 gallons, and by the third day, we had it down to maybe about five gallons. As a result of that effort, I started getting calls from folks to come to their lake. They had a tadpole problem. So all of a sudden, our group of volunteers was removing tadpoles from not only Bonita Bay Community Association lakes, but also golf course lakes. What we'd like to do now is to try to recruit more neighborhood volunteers to do this. We would love to have lake walkers, which are the volunteers who just survey the lakes and tell us when there's a problem. And if these lake walkers want to become uh, tadpolers, as we call it, we'd be happy to have you join us as uh, tadpolers as well. Ideally, we want to report this, and there are two ways you can report it. You can report it to the grounds crew email address, which is groundsmaintenance at bbcahome.com. You can email me or text me. The net we use for tadpoling is different than the net we use for cane toting. The tadpole net has to have a smaller mesh in it because sometimes these tadpoles are fairly small and if we use the cane toad net, the tadpoles will go right through the net. So you This is a deep net mesh. It's uh, used for a pool. You buy it in the pool department at your local store. I got this one here locally, it, it has an extension pole on it, so you can actually extend it out into the water if you need to. And then we usually have a 55 gallon bucket with a bag in it, and we usually only fill the bucket half full because these tadpoles can get very heavy. Once we get the tadpoles, we take them to the grounds maintenance department and put it in the freezer. Our tadpoling effort is consistent with our effort to contain cane toads. And without both efforts, we believe the containment of cane toads will be much more difficult. If you want to volunteer, there's plenty to do. And all you need to do is let us know. Uh, you can email Rod, Paul, or me, and we would be happy to get you on the uh, list of volunteers.